Richard, I'm Oprah Winfrey. And today on the program, the king of the cowboys has ridden up our TV Hill Trail. Roy Rogers will be here in just a little while. But first, have a riddle for you. What uses 100 jars of baby food a week mm. and uses over 200 diapers? Mm. Either a very giant baby or the Granada, <laughs> the four Granada babies. They're all here on People Are Talking. Eric, Amanda, Heather, and uh, Nathan. And Mama Janice. And Let's Mama welcome Janice. her to People Are Talking. Well, I tell you, we we're very excited to, to talk to you. I have three kids. They were born at different times, and I can't imagine what it's like to go into the hospital to have a baby or babies and to find out you had five. What was that like? Well, I was, I was prepared by about three weeks. When I was three months pregnant, the doctor did a sonogram and saw three babies, mm -hmm. and we were told we had triplets. And then at five months, he said I was just too big for three babies mm. and did an x-ray and said that we had five, so. So how'd you feel about that when you found out? Well, I was shocked. It was the type of thing you read about or something that happens to other people, but I was, I was really, really shocked. Uh, for, uh, and, and so too, because you had been trying to have a baby and you'd started a fertility, on a fertility drug, is that right? One month. One month you'd been on it. Mm -hmm. It worked. It did. <laughs> <laughs> it worked five times over. You, you have an, a daughter, Jenny. Yes. And she is now eight. She'll be nine, she tells me, on June the 18th. Beautiful young little girl, and you're going to meet her in just a little while, along with some of the kids that are here. Uh, tell us what happened uh, after they were born and the progress and, and lack of it in, in one case. Okay. Well, they were born when I was six months pregnant, so they were three months early. Uh, they were born by cesarean. All the babies weighed under two pounds mm. except for Britain, the baby that died. Um, they were, Our audience doesn't know that that happened. What did I happen? See. He was uh, our firstborn baby, uh, first of the five. He weighed two, three, and his lungs were just too immature to, mm -hmm. to support life. His lungs were the least developed of all five of them, and mm -hmm. he lived for two days. Um, they were all in intensive care unit, all hooked to wires and everything for a long time. When, when your babies are born that prematurely, what, uh, what is the risk involved for all of them? Because that seems very early. 60% is what they gave us. Our, the chances of them surviving were 60%. So three weeks preparation you had in, in knowing that you had five babies here. Once you find out that you have five babies, what starts going through your mind? I mean, you're living in a house, you're not prepared for five children. We want to know what, what you and your husband had to go through. Do you start thinking about moving or what? Well, in the beginning, we were, we were planning on going overseas after the babies were born, when we thought there were only triplets with my husband's work. Um, so I found out there were five babies, and then I was put in the hospital for the rest of my pregnancy, which we had hoped would be a couple more months anyway. So there was not much planning we could do. There was really nothing mm -hmm. that we could do until after they were born, and we saw, you know, if they survived and how many survived. So. Uh, we, di we didn't make any preparations. And then after they were born, it was just totally, uh, it wasn't at all what we expected. What was not what you expected? Well, Tell us all about that. Well, first, they, we have uh, five babies, and we named them. We selected names for them the night before they were born. And uh, my husband went downstairs in the hospital to park the car where it belonged or something, and he was just mobbed by media. And we, we weren't expecting that. We thought, well, you know, it was unusual, but we didn't know that. Well, we do get our noses into business things, so <laughs> other people's business sometimes. Hey, you picked the names before you knew if there, how many were going to be boys or how many girls. You just had a list we of names. We listed one through five boys, one through five girls. Ah. Yeah. Picked them that way. All right, so what else beside the media? Did, would you, he didn't like that attention, or was it something? Well, he didn't mind. It was just different. I mean, nobody, uh, nobody knew us before, and now, you know, I don't have to show driver's license to write a check in our hometown. So, uh, so you became famous. Well, I guess a little. Well, now look at this picture here. I'm sure you, these are, these are just so beautiful children. Four of the Quince and Jenny, who's going to be up here in, in a little while. When you go home from the hospital with, look at that group, <laughs> and the husband, George, of course, who could not be here today, he's out trying to earn some money. <laughs> to pay for all that baby food. <laughs> but I can't imagine what it is like to go home from the hospital with 
Okay, I guess some of them stayed back for a while. Oh, yeah, all of them But did. when they started to come on, once all of them were there, what, what was that like in your house? Oh. What, then what changed for you beside your entire life? Yeah, everything. Well, when we first brought one baby home, Eric was the first baby home, and it was two and a half months, and it was exciting and wonderful, and, and we got him home, and it was like bringing any baby home, I guess, except we stayed up all night and watched him. Uh, then when we brought the second baby home, things got a little bit hectic getting up all night with them. And then when we brought the third baby home, I cried the whole way home. I wanted to bring him home, but I just didn't know how I was going to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it was just constant changing diapers, feeding babies. Our whole lives were around what, they, what happens. And they don't all have to have their diapers changed at the same time. I mean, as soon as one gets clean, the other one, right. and as soon as one gets the other one, is, is that the way it works? They don't all decide at one time. Unfortunately, they don't. <laughs> you imagine if all kids in the world went at the same time, all the time? Wouldn't that be great? I mean, it wouldn't be great for uh, mothers and fathers. Do you resent at all? Do you, you resent? You say you felt uh, you cried when you had to bring number three home. And I'm sure you love all the babies very much, but I would imagine there's got to be some kind of built-in anger that you, I don't know, or resentment that your life has been so disrupted and changed. Was there any, or am, am I well, incorrect? N I think... There was a lot of feelings, but having a baby die was an experience that made us, I think, appreciate the other babies more. And we really wanted a baby, but for some reason, God gave us all these. <laughs> and we, uh, we enjoy them, but there are times when we say, you know, gee, it's our whole life. <laughs> Certainly is your whole life. And you said that when, when Eric first came home, you'd have to spend the night up watching. Was there a fear? Is there always this kind of fear that maybe something will happen to one of them? Maybe, you know, the, the sudden infant death syndrome, that kind of thing you, you worry about? It, in the beginning, because they were in an intensive care unit with one nurse to them at all times, hooked up to monitors and everything, and they were so well taken care of, I just thought, how can I take care of them like that? But they stressed when we took them home, they're like any normal baby now. They're okay. They're tiny, but mm -hmm. they're okay. Mm -hmm. And so, um, at first, we were worried about them just because all that they had been through. And how did your daughter Jenny feel about all of this? I mean, how did you prepare her for not another little baby brother or baby sister, but four more? Well, it, I think it was probably difficult for her. Uh, she went to school and she said that her mom was going to have five babies and nobody believed her. And uh, it was, I think it was a little difficult for her bringing them all home after being an only child for so long. But she was at an age where she falls more into an adult role and uh, the three, mom, dad, and Jenny kind of stick together sure. and, and, you know, group well, together. Well, she's a very grown-up eight-year-old and you're going to have an opportunity to meet her in just a few minutes after this break. If you have any questions at all about Janice, if you're raising a lot of children yourself, quints, uh, twins, triplets, quadruples, who knows? 481-1313 is the number to call. Let us into your nursery and we'll be right back. Don't go away. Granada. She'll be nine, uh, she will be nine years old on next June the 18th, and she is like a mother to her brothers and sisters. And let's welcome her. People in class. What do you like? What do you like best about, or worst about having all these brothers and sisters? Like them best because you can always play with them. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can always play with them. Yeah. Do they never get on your last nerve or your first one? Sometimes. Sometimes. Not usually. Not usually. Mm -hmm. How did you feel when you found out that uh, instead of having a brother or a sister, you were going to have four new ones? No, just shocked, and I loved it. And you have been like a mother. Your, your mm -hmm. mother says you have been like a mother. What? Take just a little time and tell us some of the things that you do to help mom take care of your brothers and sisters. Well, I get bottles for them, and I entertain them. My mom's cooking some supper sometimes. And 
Oh, I do lots of things. Do you I know how to change lot. diapers? Do you know how to change diapers? I changed the diaper once. <laughs> one once. time. That's all it took, right? <laughs> I know lots of guys that only change one time. So you didn't care for it too much. What do you like doing best uh, with them, as Old mentioned? What games do you like to play? Or how do you entertain your brothers and sisters? Well, I sing songs. And I let them crawl all over me. And I talk to them. What's your favorite song? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I have tons of them. Okay. Uh, do you have a favorite favorite brother and sister? Maybe no. that's not a you don't have a favorite. Yeah. Y'all want to see the kids? Would you like to see them? Let's bring them. All right. Thank you. Bring them up here, Skipper. Here they are. Here, here they go. Oh, now let's not scare them. That's, yeah, don't don't clap too much. Can you imagine? We have a. Okay. Oh, oh, everyone. Oh. Oh. I'm not the father. You are not the father, Skipper. All right. Jenny, it's gonna be okay. It's okay, baby. Jenny, you can hold. And this is uh, Eric, Heather, Nathan, and Amanda. See, I remembered uh, in that order. Now we can see that, that is Amanda over there. Amanda is still on us. Okay, Amanda has. Uh, why don't you tell us what, what her problem is? And then we got we have to find out about you. And George, if it's right, I'm going to turn this on too. Uh, what is Amanda's? Uh, you look good with a baby. I know. Her 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 lungs are still underdeveloped. And um, she was in the hospital for six and a half months. She came home two days before Christmas. She was our Christmas present. And in order to bring her home from the hospital, we had to learn how to take care of her while she was still on oxygen. And they think she'll need it maybe for another year. But other than that, she'll be just like the other kids. Man, I tell you, this makes me dizzy. Can I use your, my, your handkerchief? We have a little thingy in our nose. <laughs> and you want to use my handkerchief? Yeah. <laughs> Certainly, oh. We're going to get the little... <laughs> Oh, this is nice. <laughs> Isn't this cute? See? How do you tell them all apart? Do you always? It's still there. Oh. It's still there. I'm trying to get it out. It's hard. Come on, blow. This is good. Get a nice tight shot of old, little Mama O. Oh, come on, blow your nose. Uh, oh. Well, you can hold that. Now, sitting with all of these children is a very unusual woman, and we don't even know her story. And Barbara, do you have a free hand? Can you hold this while you just take that and sort of hold it up to your mouth while you're talking to me? This is Barbara Horning. Corning. Corning. All right. And. Uh, you're like the adopted grandmother. How did you find this family and what's your involvement with them? I have six children under five years of age and I had twins. And when I heard Jan was going to have five babies, I called her up and asked her if she needed a grandma. Well, and so is... you have been with them since then? Yes. Well now, why'd you do that? Well, I didn't have any grandchildren in our town at the time and I needed some. Mine had left. Oh. And I love children. I have to be with children, I guess. So does Oprah, as you can tell. Mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> Where, how did you feel about her call? My goodness, what a help. Oh, it, it was wonderful because at first I advertised for help and interviewed a few people. And then, <laughs> then I realized that no amount of money uh, is worth what you have to do. Yeah. You know, you have to really love them. And I wanted somebody who would love the babies, not just take care of them. So it was a an answer for me. And then what does she do? How has she been able to help you? Everything. <laughs> she comes in and then if the house needs cleaning, she cleans the house. She takes care of the kids so George and I can, that's my husband, so we can get away. Um, just anything that needs to be done. Now, Oprah, are you fascinated by the fact that the baby stopped crying when it reached my arms? <laughs> I'm truly moved. Truly moved. You can take, you can be godfather now. I tell you what we're going to do. How do you, I just want to know how you handle birthdays and what are you going to do? I mean, are we going to have a massive birthday party and when Christmas comes, good gracious. Their, their first birthday, the hospital gave them their birthday party and there were 200 doctors and nurses and people had taken care of them. And uh, it was a big party. I don't know about the second one. I haven't gotten that far yet. I tell you who's on the line right now. Amy Chikarishi, if I can reach over here. Amy is in Glenview, Illinois, which is a suburb of Chicago. And Amy, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, if you can speak up just a little bit, we'd appreciate it. We're all here. And Amy had quince back on August the 4th. Mm. Five of them. And tell us, uh, and they were three weeks premature, 36 days premature? Oh, no. They were, uh, I mean, 30 weeks. Nine weeks premature. And how are the babies doing? Doing really well. Yeah. How, are, how are you doing? Um... Pretty good. What is the most difficult thing or the most difficult things that you're finding with this experience? Do you have other kids? We have a daughter that we adopted last year, and she's 20 months old. 
So you adopted? Yes. And then you had quince? Right. Okay. Oh, my goodness. So what are the, what are the biggest problems? You're being very good. Um, probably starting to just think of in quantity. Uh, going to the store and realizing that you have to buy five of things. Right now, we're going to the hospital every night. We don't live that far, so... We are they all still in the hospital? Yes. Uh-huh. Oh. Um, so we could try and go every night and... You're trying to help the daughter realize that there are that, that they're all home. Mm. Okay, we're having a little trouble with your line. Uh, getting a little bit of feedback coming coming through there. You, have you talked with Janice before? No, I haven't. What can you What do you say to another mother who had twins? Well, Go ahead. She's right there. Help us uh, out. Uh, one of the things that helped us the most was we learned to be assertive and ask. And we wrote diaper companies and baby food companies and we got free cases of diapers and we got free baby food and free furniture and we really, you have to think in quantities, but don't get too overwhelmed. Well, that by raises it. the issue, how do you yes, afford how this? Do you afford? Well, it financially probably is one of the biggest things, but you, you know, you, you compromise. One place donated us beds if they would, uh, if we'd let them take pictures of our babies in their beds and saying that they were good beds, and so we thought that you was a fair trade. You said they were trade. great beds. That's right. <laughs> For <laughs> free, they were the wonderful greatest beds. beds. <laughs> and different, oh, different things like that. Now, I know Gerber donated baby food, but for how long? They donated 1,860-something jars of baby food, which was all that we've needed so far. Did you need to get, you get to pick your own kind? Uh, yes. Oh, well, uh -huh. good. That's important to know. I mean, you wouldn't want all pea soup kind. No. Know, really yeah, they let me pick, our, uh, let us pick our own kind. And if you write to, to Gerber, or if, can I mention brand names? Sure, our, you mentioned Gerber. Our, our, our Pampers, they'll, they will help out some. Right. And oh, a baby, local, local a furniture store gave us oh, furniture. Right. Oh, you know, I'm going to try one ride. No, 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 no. I got it. I got it. I got all it. right. Oh, okay. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to give you all an opportunity to leave our people they're talking stage, except you. Oh, that Jenny, you can well. stay on, too, but we'll be back in just a moment. And thank you, Amy, for taking part in our show. Look at that. joined now by a mother-to-be. Uh, this is a young woman who has one baby and is expecting her second. Uh, let's see. Any, any minute now, right? When do you do? Three weeks. In three weeks. Well, you're a pretty young mother. You really are. What questions Thank might you. you have to ask about being the mother of more than one? I was wondering if you could tell me, in preparation for my upcoming birth, what is a typical day like, how early it starts and how long it goes? Well, it's like, it's very scheduled. At 7 o'clock, we get up in the morning, feed, change, dress the babies, and play with them. They go in at, at 10 o'clock for a morning nap, sleep until noon. Uh, at noon, we get up, feed, the, or they get up, we feed them lunch and play with them. They play until about 3, go in for an afternoon nap from 3 to 5. Uh, Dad comes home at 5 and... Uh, spends time with them, that we take them swimming in the evening and they go to bed at 7.30 for the night. So what do you do in your spare time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> huh. I understand Dad built a pool in the basement so the babies have been uh, acclimated to water since the time they came home. Yes, yes, they all go underwater and are swimming. They really uh, swim, that's good. Yeah. What did you think of that schedule? Uh, sounds like a long day. <laughs> it's a long day, but my kids go to bed at 7.30. And that's something we didn't do when we just had one, and oh, I wouldn't have it any other way. How about waking each other up? Do you find that's a problem? N not very much. They're used to each other's cries, and they ignore each other. Unless somebody's hurt, and then it's a hurt cry, and then everybody else gets alarmed. They're mm -hmm. very tuned into each other. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Let us know what you have. Send us a cigar, a box of candy. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that you uh, believe in the Better Baby Institute, and you use the flashcards with the baby. Can you tell us about that? We've had Glenn Doman on the show. Uh -huh. And uh, so you, you use flashcards with the, with the babies. Yes, we're teaching them how to read and how to... Uh, uh, um, numbers, rather, and how to read, and we taught Jenny when she was a baby. And so you believe in, in brighter babies? Yes. Uh, Jenny, a brighter baby now? Do you do well in school and everything? Yeah. She does. Reads yes. a lot? Yes. 
<laughs> she reads a yeah. lot. She does. Yeah. She does extremely well in school. What are your favorite subjects? Let's let's let me take you. Math is math your favorite. Is. Mm -hmm. Figures. Yeah. And so, how are the babies progressing with the with the flashcards and the? They're doing really well. They read a lot of words. I know pe a lot of people don't believe it, but when I hold up the word "bye bye" and Heather says "bye bye," I know she can read it. I would imagine, <clears throat> with all due respect, that when for all of this to happen to you and your husband at the same time, you must get into some wonderful discussions. <laughs> do you have some pretty good arguments about things? Oh. And if so, and of course you do. And what do you fight about? Uh, ridiculous things, mostly you know, whose turn it is to do something with the babies or something, and that's... It's thing. your feeding, George, that's right. right? That's right. <laughs> Does he ever say, why'd you ever take that pill? <laughs> no, it was injections, and he was the one who administered them. The doctor taught him how to give the shots, so he never says anything. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's see who's on the line. Good morning. You're on Channel 13's People Are Talking. You're on the air. Good morning. Now speak up. Uh, my sister has twin boys. She has a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. And she is so busy that I just want to congratulate this lady for all of her efforts because it's just one hell of a job. Oh, man. <laughs> is there anything that you can, any advice that you can give her when she <clears throat> has twins together and they're both crying at the same time, which one to pick up or what to do to amuse the other one? Usually whoever cried the loudest is who I picked up. And then realizing that it's, it's okay if they cry, that you'll get to them and it's okay. And with us, the babies and, and Jenny are the most important things in our lives now. And if the house isn't just perfect, then the house isn't perfect. As long as the kids are loved and fed and taken care of, that's... You can never have a perfect right. house with four babies. That's right. Oh. Or one. Excuse now. <laughs> Thank you for your call. Your question, please. Did your insurance cover all your medical bills? <laughs> Uh, so far, our medical bills have been over, uh, well, a half million dollars, mm. and insurance has covered all of them, yes. Okay, thank My you. My goodness, I can imagine that is a very, very difficult thing to have to do. Is that really been the most difficult thing to keep you, do you stay awake at night worrying about bills or finances? No, we really don't, uh, because, well, George has a good job, and, and they have taken care of the medical, but... Uh, the, the things we worry about the most is giving them the kids all we can and having to divide our attention. Uh, when we want to give them individual love, not just as a group. Can you do that? We do. We, uh, George will take one or I'll take one. We'll go up to another room and build blocks with just one baby and it's so, so much fun. Do they all have various personalities or are some, some personalities the same? They're, every one of them is as different as they can be. As we can hear in the background. <laughs> Good morning, you're on People Are Talking. Uh, I, just, I just wanted to tell your guest that I saw her last night uh, Phillips Crab House, and I didn't want to bother her, but she did an excellent job with her baby. You all went to Phillips? Thank you, yes. This whole group? Yes. By the way, I must say, you are all traveling. Uh, the, the four kids and Jenny, the five kids, you and uh, the, your adopted grandmother. grandmother and your brother? Mm -hmm. Is that it? The driver. The driver. The, uh, the, uh, all of them are in one van. They drove up TV Hill today. I couldn't believe it. And you drove from where? Finley, Ohio. I'm going to tell you, you how did, 13 I salute five times over. For those of us who were not at the Crab House last night, how did she handle it? What was, what was happening? Oh, it, they were... <laughs> one baby started crying and, and uh, she picked the baby up and everything was, it was fine. I have more trouble with my baby <laughs> with one than she had with four. What did you eat last night, Jenny? Chicken. How was it? Fine. Chicken at the Crab House. I thanks swear. for your call. <laughs> and Mr. Phillips, thanks you too. Welcome to the show. Hi. Do you and your husband ever get time together by yourselves? Yes. We, that, we schedule it, and it has to be. We try to go out one night a week, and I try to have lunch with him one day a week. Oh, that's nice. And yes, we Do you will. talk about anything beside the children? That's what's hard, is we'll go out and we'll say, we're not going to talk about the kids, and we're not going to talk about money, and we're not going to talk about your work. And we sit there and don't talk. So, <laughs> uh, any plans for any more babies? Uh, no. <laughs> no more plans for any more babies. <laughs> no. Welcome to the show. Thank you. No more questions? Okay. So there are no more plans for any more babies. <laughs> no. Where, uh, George is home. What does he do? We He's a geologist for Marathon Oil Company. And I wish we could have talked to him because I'd like to know how he feels about all of this. Can you share as best you can his feelings about all of this? He is, he's a super father. He, he loves the kids. He gets, uh, I don't think he has the patience quite that I do, but that's because he's not with them all day. 
but he's really, really good, and he, does, he doesn't like traveling with them. He doesn't like going into a restaurant with them because they do make a little of a mess, and they do get a little loud, and he's always worried that we're going to bother somebody else, but uh, other than that, he's super at home. He can take care of all four of them if I'm gone for the couple days. He can take what do you them. want the kids to be when they grow up? Whatever they want to be. That's a good answer. That's all you said. Jenny, what do you want to be? Oh, just about everything all the way up. Artist, a waitress, a teacher, and singer and dancer. All right, what are you going to do on Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> we want to thank you all for coming up. Driving that van from Ohio to people are talking today. You deserve a lot of credit, a lot of gasoline, all the free diapers you can get. <laughs> and we want to really thank you and wish you luck, Jenny, and you too, Janice and George, and all the thank kids. You. And thank you all for your calls. And in just a moment, we're going to be back with... Roy Rogers! Don't go away. He's here.